What is up guys? Coming at you with a little video today on just a couple tips on how to remove things. So what we have here is we have a shot that was shot on my slider and we were in kind of a small room. We could like see the door frame and the corner of the wall. Some shots you can even see into the hallway. It looks weird. So we're gonna take it out. So we've already got it stabilized. But what we're gonna do is just send this to After Effects. So we're gonna right click, replace with After Effects composition. We're gonna scroll to the part where we see the door, mostly in frame, which is right here. We're gonna export this frame. I'm gonna actually just use this little create reference frame button using the content aware fill. Even though we're not gonna do any content aware fill inside of After Effects, we're gonna jump over to Photoshop, bring it back in as a still frame. So that's just an easy way to export your frame though, if you want to. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a little selection here. And in previous versions of Photoshop, you could just right click, hit fill, hit content aware fill. But they now have another option. I don't know when this came in. You guys can help me out if you know, but you can now right click and click content aware fill right inside the right click menu, which wasn't there before. And then this really cool dialogue thing comes up and you can actually choose what you want content aware fill to pull from. So it has a little default selection here, but you can actually add and subtract. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract a little bit of this cause we don't want that added to our fill. And we don't want this cause it's just too far away as far as lighting goes. And then we're gonna take away a little bit of this frame and shadow as well. And you get a little preview over here super super nice so you actually know what the heck you're doing before you hit the fill button and it looks really clean over here so i'm going to move myself out of the way hit okay and look not only does it give you a preview and allows you to choose where you you're pulling from it actually gives you another layer too it doesn't like delete the original layer and fill in the content aware fill and um, get into like destructive editing it actually uses non-destructive editing gives you a layer right on top of that so you can just click that off and you have your original layer there. Super nice. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna add a little bit to our selection here, feather it. So now we're kind of feathering between the new and the original shot. We're gonna merge these two layers together, make a little layer mask. Boom, we got a little feather going on here. Save that file, go back to After Effects and we should have our little reference frame here. We're gonna move it above and we're going to change it to freeze frame so it's not just that one frame in time and move it all the way over so it spans the whole timeline and reload footage. There we go. So it is now removed from our shot. Now the problem is though, if we just scroll all the way back, you can kind of start to see this line even though it's feathered because it's not moving with our shot. The shot's moving but then this little weird corner is not moving at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna track some motion. So let's go ahead and turn off our reference frame double click here on this original footage layer. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna find a point that's very defined and is visible throughout the whole span of the shot and we're gonna track that. So we're gonna go over to our tracker, click on track motion. And the one I've been tracking that's worked pretty well so far is this little leaf right here. So I'm gonna put my X right in the middle, pull my box out, pull my box out here. Since we're at the end of the shot, we're gonna click analyze backward, let it analyze through. And while you're analyzing in After Effects, you have a spare second. So maybe you'll just go ahead and uh, like this video, maybe even subscribe. All right, so that's finished tracking now. I can stop doing shameless self-promotion. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go up to layer, layer new, and we're gonna create a null object. So a null object is basically like a nothing object. It's like not there, but it helps you like add data to it and like cool stuff like that. So you hit on edit target, click on that. Then you're gonna choose your null layer and we're gonna send this data to the null layer. So we're gonna click on apply, X and Y dimensions are good, click okay. All right, so now that tracking data we just did, the, the little flower, now is attached to this null layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go where our reference frame starts, which is here. This is like the, where the reference frame is actually in the correct position. So it's really important to have your playhead at the right point where your frame is at the correct position. Then you're gonna click on this little spiral thingy, which is a parent. It's also called a pick whip, the parent pick whip. So now you can select layer from which to inherit transforms. Basically what that means is like, where's this layer gonna go? So basically you're gonna go click on this little layer and drag over to null three, which is our layer we just created. So when you do that, wherever that null layer was moving and tracked is where, see the little dots, is where our reference frame is going to move. So now as we go through and move, you can see the reference frame actually moving instead of staying in that one spot. So our reference frame tracks across the entire frame now and it completely removed that door. So yeah guys, hope you enjoyed this video. 
hope it was helpful for you. Leave a like, leave a subscription. Man, it's fun. You guys are cool. I'll see you guys in the next one, hopefully soon. Bye.